We're good. Hey there, what's up? This is Phil, and I'm here tonight with my buddy Peter Baird. Is that correct? That is correct. From Canada. And we uh, watched the very first episode of season eight of Game of Thrones, which we are dubbing the reunion episode because that's pretty much all that happened. Oh, they were good reunions, right? They were awesome reunions. I, I, I cannot complain. Yeah, it, it was. I'm not always happy with first episodes of Game of Thrones because they are extremely slow. They're extremely just setting up. And usually they take at least two, three episodes to set up what's going on for the season. Uh, but this one moved rather quickly. So even though we did have a... It was a setup episode, but it was pretty well paced. I mean... I, I cried. Like, I cried. Oh, he cried. I, I cried like a baby. I didn't notice. I didn't cry. But I I liked, I liked it. I mean, it definitely uh, started the season off with a bang. Because that's what everybody's worried about, right? After two years, does the show yeah. still have it? And obviously, because they are long past the George R. R. Martin material. That was the thing, Phil. Uh, everybody expected, like, a bang, right? Everyone yes. expected, like, everyone's going to fucking die and that's going to be it. But it turns out that the entire episode was just about human interaction yeah and and reunions and to me that was actually really cool i think that's episode three where everybody's gonna die yeah <laughs> from what i hear that's the big battle episode but no it made sense it made sense for it to have all these reunions have these character moments but i like that they did them quickly it, it didn't draw out it did. You know what I what I really loved was um, Arya and the Hound getting back together. Oh, we were gonna talk. We're definitely gonna talk about Arya and the Hound because that was a really really great uh, little character moment between yeah. the two of them. It was quick and efficient, and it told yeah. everything that it had and, to say. It and, lasted like twenty seconds. Yes. And and she she he he said uh, what you you left me to die. And she's like, yeah, I did. No, and I robbed it. you first. Yeah. <laughs> I robbed you first. And he's like, well, you're a cold little... Well, let's not talk about you're it cold yet. cold little bitch. Let's not talk about it yet. We're going to get there <laughs> first. I think the person that had the biggest moments this episode was our very own, own Jon Snow. This was the Jon Snow episode, too. Yeah, he it was. So, it was all about him. Yeah. He had so many revelations and... Yeah, um, you, you know what I like <laughs> is he found out he was fucking his aunt and he didn't care. Well, not, <laughs> He's like, okay, I've been fucking my aunt. I uh, think he cared. He had this look on his face. He, it was definitely one of those. He was surprised. You know nothing, Jon Snow. He had one of those looks on his yeah. face, like when they tell yeah. him you know nothing. Because yeah. literally, I think his mind just got blown. But But first... He had a lot of great reunions. The first one, I that the one that I liked the most was with with Arya. Of course, I yes. thought that that was sweet. He gave her the sword. Yes, yeah. which I hadn't even remembered. And I just watched all of up to season five of Game yeah, of Thrones. Yeah, she I stabbed that kid in the gut with it in season one. Yeah, but I don't remember that he had given it to her. But anyway, yeah. my memory's short when it comes to Game of Thrones because there's so much that happens in this show. So that was a great reunion. And it was a great character moment because she was talking about the importance of family. And we kind of already know what was coming up. But I thought it would be revealed a little bit later, maybe in the second or yeah. episode. So I'm glad it got revealed early. But before we get there, we also had a little bit more consolidation of the Daenerys Jon Snow love affair. Uh, gross. That which is. is gross. But I think it's <laughs> gross even... Well, Even I mean, without that extra stuff, it's just not something I'm feeling. I didn't feel it last season. It's not and, any more gross than than Cersei fucking your brother, is it? Well, that's true. But it, but at least they have this chemistry, the two of them, uh, Jamie and, and Cersei, that I don't see it between Daenerys and Jon Snow. I, I mean, it's okay. part of the story, so it's not like it's shoehorned in, but it... <laughs> it I don't know. It's just when it happened last season, even before... Cause 
I don't keep up with too much of the, what is that, J plus P equals R. I don't know all those weird uh, mythologies, you know, that the people were, were talking about like years before. Right. That had to do with, uh, you know, this guy marrying this woman equals this. Even with uh, taking out all of that, I just not feeling the Jon Snow love connection. Because for me, his true love was that redheaded bitch, that wildling. Yes, yes. That, I, I agree completely. That was the love affair to remember from yeah. this. From and he this, put an arrow through her heart. Yeah, from this whole show. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of love and uh, murder and all that. But, but for me, I, that's I the think one. For me, that is the beauty of Game of Thrones is that um, it doesn't see things in black and white. It doesn't see things like, I don't know, like, in uh, in a clear moral perspective, so yes, of course we we see that that redheaded bitch is John's true love, and they got married in real life. They, yeah, they yeah. did. They yeah. did. I think actually. just last year. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, of course, it it doesn't work out that way. Yeah. No, I get you. I get it. But it, it, it's something about the chemistry between the two actors. It just never okay. did it for me uh, on that level. But, you know, it's there. And even these scenes uh, with the two of them, they were riding dragons, which, by the way, I'm going to skip forward a slide because we do got to mention the dragons a little bit. Yeah, they did. The dragons they, are awesome. Yeah, they definitely were spending a lot of money this season. They did say that with the CGI. Some of it I thought was so-so, the CGI, especially right before he was getting on the dragon. It, it was very obvious that there was nothing there. Yeah. But, um, but it was cool. Kind of a Superman, you know, Donner Superman, you know, that first flight with Lois Lane. So romantic with the music swelling and everything. Classic movie moment. And it had that feel to it, but with dragons. <laughs> And you know, Phil, that that's why I think the entire thing is going to to fail in terms of the romance. Oh, for sure. Because it's set um, up to fail. Yeah, it it is so set up to fail. Because I mean, like you look at it, and it's like if you look at the history of this show, everything has been a tragedy. Yes. And and John and Daenerys together, like that's that's what the audience wants. That's that's like a fucking dream romance. And if that's what the audience wants, of course it's going to fail. Of course it's going to fail. Yeah. That, that, is, that is like instant death. Right oh, I there. hope so. I hope so. Because I, I <laughs> that's one relationship I'm not feeling on this, in this series. But, you know, they had their cute little moment together. They, and, they and, 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 oh, and, you know, speaking of, you know, I, we... I, I wish I remembered her name, the redheaded girl. Um, let's find out what her name was, so we don't keep calling her a redheaded bitch, because you know we gotta respect the women. Uh, redheaded wildling. I, hey, uh, Greta, you Greta, you Greta. Is that her name? You yeah. Greta. You Greta. Oh, you yeah. There you go. You Greta. You good man. I'm. <laughs> Told you, man. You Greta. Yeah. So you Greta. Oh, that was so sweet. And, yeah, and, yeah. But you know, she gave I, him his first blowjob. I know. I think she gave him his first fuck. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this scene where they were riding off with the dragons, and they ended up in this uh, little waterfall, and then they kind of re gave a little bit of a wink and a nod to that relationship because Daenerys had that line about we could just stay here for a thousand years. Which was what you Greta had said. Remember when they ran yeah, off yeah. and they found that little cave? So that made it sting even more. That I'm like, ah oh, man, you know, his true love was that girl, you Greta. I mean, yeah. I'm not feeling this one. I, I, I just, I didn't feel the chemistry in this scene. And I, and I think it has something to do with Daenerys. Like I don't see Daenerys. She's slept with a few men throughout the, the the show, but I don't think she's capable of loving anybody other than Count Drogo. That was her true love. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And everything beyond that, it just doesn't feel right for her character. Like her character is so cold that she just doesn't give off this affection. I mean, when you, when she smiles, it doesn't feel like she should be smiling. Like, uh, um, I know in the books, I haven't read the books, but I read about the books. Right. She's characterized as very, very, very like a down, like 
character, you know, constantly losing everything, very, you know, she's she's this character who's lost everything and will lose everything. And characters like that, I don't think they deserve to smile. Like, maybe I'm just being really mean. Uh, but <laughs> she, she, she doesn't give off that warm feeling of, oh, this is a woman that a man is just going to fall for because she's so cold. She's so... Um, focused on this one goal, which is to to rule the seven kingdoms, that there shouldn't be time for romance for Daenerys. Like, her loves are her dragons. Yeah. And that's another thing I didn't like, that they didn't even give that we much... We didn't get the dragons. Well, we didn't get, like, a, I mean, I know last season, obviously, when she saw her dragon get killed, there was the, the reaction shot, but I was hoping there would be a little bit more... It seemed like, okay, yeah, the dragons, one of her dragons is dead, and she's moved on with life. So I don't know. Um, I wasn't feeling Daenerys too much this episode, obviously. But then, but let's get to the big one. The big one there, as you see on the left, is Sam. After he finds out Daenerys yes. burns her, his dad and his brother. Yes, yes. Oh my God, that that scene was actually. I think that was the most poignant scene yes, of the yes, entire series. Yes. I was happy to see him. I love his character. And then he meets up with Jon Snow in the crypts. And they did it, man. They told him. I was so happy because one thing I hate about shows that have a lot of mysteries and, you know, these big uh, revelations is what, how they don't give it to you. Yes. Like they wait. You know, yeah. and we, the audience, are like, man, just say it. Just say yeah. it. We know. Why we, don't you fucking know? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad that they just got that out of the way. Yeah. First episode, they didn't drag it on because that would have just yeah. been so he's like, fucking frustrating. He's like, your girlfriend murdered my dad and my brother. Yes. Okay. Done. Over. It's yes. not an issue anymore. Exactly. And <laughs> your girlfriend is also your aunt. Yeah, and you're the true king. That was that which, was a bit which, of a... which is the biggest revelation. <laughs> you know, I mean, fuck the dad and the, and the brother. That that's the revelation everybody's been waiting for, and that characters like that can be can be a bit of a of a downer on on shows like the all knowing characters, right. which Bran is because yeah, you wonder. Sam, Sam. Well, no, uh, well, I'm saying Bran because you know it's a combined effort right. to, to find out it is, who, yes. you know, to, to get this information. Yeah. So characters like that could be a bit of a bitch because they're like, you know, they fit into the plot when it's necessary. Like they'll give you the information when it's necessary. Why didn't you give the information? Like, <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't think of another character right now, but there's, there's a bunch of movies and series right. where there's that all knowing character. You're like, just say what you know, you know, you're a seer. you, you, you have psychic powers or whatever you have that lets you look into the future, in the past, in the present, at, all at once. And it's very convenient when it is that you <laughs> give the information. Yeah. So characters like that can be really bad. And Bran is borderline that, you know. Yeah, Bran is a nuisance, man. Yeah, because obviously he knows. Well, speaking of which... You know, switching topics for a millisecond. Avengers Endgame with Doctor Strange. I yeah, see all the yeah, futures. Yeah, I There's see only, every future that can possibly happen. And only one is going to be... Well, yeah. tell us what the fuck it is before yeah. you poof. You yeah. know, like that's annoying. You know, I mean, I get that it works on a on a dramatic it, level. Yeah, it's, oh, it's going to work. It's going to work. Yeah, it's no, going to make for an awesome movie. No, it is. It is. But at the same time, you're like, just spill the beans. <laughs> yeah. All right, you know, the, the, know. Fucking you jerk. just got to put a miniature Ant-Man up Thanos' anus. <laughs> That's it, and you're done. But yeah. um, so all-knowing characters can be a bit of a bitch. And so I'm glad Game of Thrones did not drag this on, and we got Jon Snow's reaction. We did. Or Jon Targar Targaryen, whatever. And... We'll see what where it leads because we'll, now he's got this big yeah, decision I'm, to you, make. You know what I'm really glad about Phil? I'm I'm glad that um, they didn't dump all the expectations on us in the first episode. Mm -hmm. In the first episode, they just teased us. That's all they did. Yeah. They teased us. It's like a fucking hooker sucking your fucking. Well, you know what I mean. It, it, 
It was a tease. That's it was a old, tease. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I'll go one more. It was a tease, but it was a good tease. It yeah, wasn't, it was. It wasn't just, uh, you know, Sam going down to the crypts. Yeah. I have to tell you something, and then Arya comes in or something, and oh, we exactly. gotta wait till the next episode. Exactly. That's no, what it, I'm saying. It, 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 they, they, they teased, but they delivered. They delivered. Yeah. There yeah. was a lot of delivery this episode. On storylines, on stuff that's gonna move the story forward. Exactly, you know? and and I like that. I don't I don't mind teasing if it teases, but it sets up something important, and it and it gives the audience because the audience, I mean, Game of Thrones is one of those shows like um, back when I was a little bit younger, Lost was the the, the episode where everybody's got a million theories. And Lost didn't do this very well, where they would drag on and drag on and drag on, you know, where they the show realizes, hey, we got a lot of fucking wacky level fanatic people that have got a billion theories about things. Some are right, some are yeah, wrong. They're, they're Let, fucking with us. That's yeah, what they're doing. No, they're no, fucking with us. No, they're fucking with us, but at the same time, they're respecting the audience. Yes, where they're like, I man, agree. people figured out that Jon Snow wasn't. Ned's son like three seasons ago so right. why are we gonna drag it on just right. boom let, land it on let it up. and see what the character reaction is gonna be that's the that's the cool part where we right. as an audience are like we don't know is John gonna tell Daenerys is John gonna keep the information to himself what's gonna if happen if I was banging that I would keep it to myself you might want to <laughs> <laughs> so that I enjoyed about um, these scenes but let's move on uh, because although most of the episode happens in the north in Winterfell, and by the way, they had a really beautiful shot of Winterfell, uh, like a bird's eye view, which I don't think we'd ever seen before. So that was kind of cool. That yeah, was nice. But no, actually, in season one, when Tyrion is pissing off the wall, they had that was a, actually really nice. Um, oh, but let's yeah. just go down south just for a minute. Not a lot happened down south. That was that. Interesting, but, at least. Oh for me. my god, that was that was actually a beautiful moment though. The the fucking uh, Greyjoys getting back together. Yes. That was that was heartwarming. Yes. So because he was such a fucking coward. Yes. But he did the right thing because he couldn't have won, so he jumped ship, came back and saved her. Yes, that I was like beautiful. that. So, well. Let, I'm gonna hold off on them for just for a second because I, I want to get rid of the the easy the quick uh, plot line here, which is what's his name? Uh, Euron. Theon. No, Euron. Euron is the uncle. Yeah, Euron coming back with the Iron Fleet. Yeah. And Cersei's planning. Well, Cersei's plan is just to sit out the war and yeah, and then Bad attack plan. afterwards. Bad plan. Bad plan. But you know, it was, it was a just a. I didn't get any excited about anything that was happening down in King's Landing. It was just, it was very, uh, was it pragmatic, you know, just to move the plot forward. For me, I found it, I found it um, very um, <laughs> inspirational to see Theon like. No, we'll like, get, we'll get to Theon. Wait, we'll literally, get to, literally get his balls back. No, we'll get to Theon. I'm going to talk about Theon, but first I want to focus on on Euron and, right. and the All Iron right. Fleet okay. and, and what's okay. going on with Cersei. Okay. No, because I also like that part a lot. But just you know, this yeah. is all happening in the South, so we right. got we got these uh these two pictures here. So I don't know what do you think of Euron. You know, he got to fuck Cersei. Uh, I don't know. For me. I guess that's important, but there's not a lot that is happening in the storyline just based on what Cersei said last season, that she's going to weigh it out the war. So, you know, there's not much that's interesting other than, okay, Cersei's super evil and uh, she, she, what, she ordered Bronn to kill her brothers? I, I, I think Cersei did exactly what she said she was going to do. Yeah. But she is disappointed with the results, basically, is what I saw. Um, I mean... Oh, yeah, because she didn't expect... Yeah, because she was looking for the elephants and this and that, right? The, 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 the... Yeah, I, I think she thought Euron could deliver more than he could. Mm -hmm. And in the end, he, he didn't deliver shit. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't anything. But I think that's just because of where the story is right now. I think this first half of the season 
is going to really just focus on the north because that is the main thing going on with the right. Night King coming down. So there's not a lot to tell in King's Landing because we already know the basic plot. So right. she's just going to sit out. She's going to get her minions together and then we'll see what happens after that. Supposedly that third episode is going to be the big battle at Winterfell and then we'll see what the last three or was it four episodes? Because what have we got? Seven or six? This, this seven. Is, seven. So those last four episodes, I think, are going to go back to old school Game of Thrones, which yeah. really had to do with the politics and the, the human aspect of it, which in a way I'm looking forward to because I do miss that part of the Game of Thrones, the less fantasy uh, side of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Game of Thrones is actually based on the War of Roses which is um, a very famous British civil war. Yes. And it was between, what was it, the Lancasters and the Yorks. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds kind of like the Lannisters and the Starks. Yeah, maybe. yeah. And uh, the, Lan the Lancasters won that war. So I'm thinking that probably the Lannisters will win this one. But it's going to be a bitter victory. I believe it'll be a, a bitter victory if they do win. Uh, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I want to see. I think that's it. When I heard these supposed spoilers that the Night King might go down in the third episode, they might just kill him off, and it's not going to be the end game. Like, the Night King is not going to be the end game of this show. Yeah. It got me kind of excited. It got me interested. You know, why to why see. would the Night King be the biggest thing? He's just a fucking nuisance, really. Yeah. Well, it, it, I think it's just because of how much they build him up. Yeah, but that's in, why. In they, the they do that the to show. distract you. Yeah. They do that to distract you. The, the, real, the real thing is the battle between Cersei's desire to keep the throne. Yes. And... That all the people she thinks that is trying to take it away from her. Yes. Most of whom don't even really fucking want it. No. I mean, you saw that episode, uh, Jon Snow. He's like, fuck the throne, man. Yeah. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. Yeah, the only one that really, really wants that throne is Daenerys, which is right. scary. Which might really fuck her up in, uh, in the near future. But let's go to your heartwarming reunion. Because, again, we said this is the reunion episode. So, yes, we got... Uh, Theon and oh. and what's her name? Um, we just looked her name up and we I did, forgot. We did. I forgot it as well. Uh, let's see. I got it here for quick access. Oh, Yara. 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 Yara, which looked really different, man. I mean, um, she looked like she aged a couple, a little bit. She looked kind of hard. Yeah. Around the face, but uh. I like that character. I like her. Uh, I do. Yeah, I do a lot. Well. So, yeah, Redemption arc. Again, I like that this episode was it teased, but it didn't. I mean, it just got right to business. I mean, we knew yeah. that that was something that was going to happen, that he was going to try to save yeah. her. I thought it was kind of a quick save. I mean, it just kind of, you know, uh, I would have liked a little bit more tension, a little bit more battle going in to try to save her, but whatever. I mean... Well, are, are you kidding? Theon going into battle, the guy's lost his fucking balls. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that ship was really unprotected, you know. I mean, I guess everybody was already on in, in King's Landing. Yeah. But it just happened so quick that I was like, wait, what's going on? And then, oh, he saved it. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was a great reunion. She gave him a little headbutt, which he deserved. Yeah, he did. And... You know, apparently he's going to go up to Winterfell to fight with the Stark army. And she's going to protect the Iron Islands in case uh, things go south, literally south, yeah. with the dead. And, uh, you know, because the dead can't swim. So <laughs> the Iron Islands it's are probably going to She's got an easy this. job, actually. Yeah, just stay the fuck away. That's where <laughs> I would be going. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm like, oh, I think Euron said the same thing last season. He's like, man, can they swim? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he did. I'm out of here. So uh, we, we'll see what happens with that. It's it's not a storyline that it's that exciting. No, it's not but, that exciting. But but we do need that. I was glad to see it yeah, resolved. Yeah, it's one of those things that I'm glad to see resolved. And there's so many things that need to be resolved before the end of this um, this season that 
I was happy with this first episode as far as how quickly it got to things. And it, it was fast-paced. Yeah. It was fast-paced. Very fast-paced. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that... I mean, it's a criticism of the show after it... After it um, What's the word? After it got done with the source material. Right. And it kind of had to start making stuff up on its own. Yeah. It said it became much more television-esque in a sense as yeah. far as how the plot moved along, the pacing. And some people kind of missed the old school Game of Thrones where they would spend five-minute scenes of just talking to each other. Oh, it's true. It's true. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, I have been watching uh, Game of Thrones just to, uh, with my little brother. And some of that shit sometimes would be like, man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, I mean, I like it, but at the same time, it's like, I can't, I get it. I get why people, there are people out there that don't like Game of Thrones because they're trying to watch it. It's like, blah, 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 blah. And everybody's got like, I remember when I was 10. <laughs> There's all like, everybody's got an I remember when I was 12 or 10 years old story that well, they have to tell at the yeah, right moment. That's because there's a backstory there that is longer than, than the, the actual yes, show. Yes, 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 So, like, it's, Rhaegar Targaryen. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like, but it's funny, you know, those, those, because uh, it kind of goes against one of the first rules of uh, cinema or the visual visual mediums is show don't tell right but game of thrones doesn't give a fuck i mean we're gonna sit in a room and i'm gonna tell you about the time yeah i was uh 15 years old and i had to kill a man for the first time but it's so well written that you yeah. just like you and so well acted that you just you know you get into it but i i think that it didn't necessarily strike that balance very well i think around season six i thought it moved too fast i like this it, it was a nice blend of dialoguing but at the same time moving it along because you know we don't have 10 episodes <laughs> yeah 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 things it's happen gotta be, it's gotta go fast it's gotta go fast now speaking of another reunion Oh, oh yes. Speaking oh, of things man. that that the right my favorite boy girl action team of all time. Yes, and, and speaking of yet another time when the writers just got down to business, they didn't have to do like a five minute scene. Yeah, she scene. was just like, "Fuck you." I hope I, I thought you died. You didn't. Yes. I hope I wish you did, but she didn't really mean it. Yes. She she was genuinely like glad to see him alive. Yes. And. That was it. Yes, that was and, it. And he's like, you're a cold-hearted like, bitch. I yeah. guess that's why he stayed alive. Yeah. And, yeah. And and he was, that was what I really liked about that scene, is that yes. he was expecting more from her mm -hmm. than she was from him. When she saw him, she's like, well, you're still fucking alive. Yes. And he expected more. And he was actually, you could see it on his face. He was disappointed. Uh -huh. And it's just like... You're a cold-hearted bitch. Yeah. And he just walked away. Like, the the whole two years we have been waiting for this season, I have been waiting to see those two get back together. And it was a perfect and, and, and when they saw each other, she was basically just like, eh, you're alive. Fuck you. And he was like, well, fuck, that was insensitive. Fuck you, too. And they went their separate ways. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. No, that's what, that's what I'm saying, that, that this first episode, it was a setup, but it wasn't. You know, it, 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 got, uh, it got shit done quickly, efficiently, and it um, I didn't waste time trying to do us because... These aren't emotional motherfuckers, you know? So why are they going to make them emotional motherfuckers? Why is there going to be, like, this emotional... Um, um, well, the thing is... It doesn't I, have to be an emotional reunion I, every single time. I think the Hound and Arya have always had an emotional connection. Like, he, he's, he, he replaced Ned as her father figure, basically. Yes. And um, there there is a close connection there. Yeah. But they... They don't want to acknowledge it. Yes. They're, because they're they're just hardcore motherfuckers. It's like, um, yeah, love hate. What's that old ass show? Uh, Moonlighting. 
you know? Right. <laughs> they, they, I'm, I'm surprised you know that. Oh, no, I remember Moonlighting. Actually, I remember that from when I was very little and I still lived in Brazil because my mom used to watch it. And the Portuguese name of it, you're going to laugh, is... I'm going to translate it. It's the cat and the mouse. You got to, you have to. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they're just always chasing each other, but never are supposed to be together. But, um, yeah, I, I liked their scene. And yeah. I, it, like, the, for me, the thing was, like, that was, for me, like, it was more important than the battle with the fucking Night King. Or yes. Whatever the fuck yeah. it was. Like, <laughs> seeing Arya and and the Hound get back together. And, uh, that was, that was going to be, like, the biggest thing. It, and when they got back together, they were both just like, fuck you, fuck you. And I'll, tell you, and I'll tell you another thing that they did well this episode is even with uh, little Tyrion, you know, over there. Like, all the reunions, all the things that everybody was... Uh, he was rather inconsequential, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, which is weird because, you know, a guy I, I listen to a lot, as, uh, he has a YouTube channel, and he's usually on point with a lot of his um, predictions, and he said that when they premiered this episode I, I think it was in new york or something the word was that Tyrion was going to do something this episode that would put him on a lot of people's death list uh, as far as he was going to die but i didn't see it. i mean at least i didn't notice anything that he no. did he was pretty inconsequential he had a few good jokes about yeah, you know, it, it, it was funny actually that 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 yeah. is actually one of the more surprising things about this episode oh the, is that it was funny yes and that's weird because the same guy did say that too he said that this is one of the funniest episodes of uh game of thrones but i didn't see Tyrion do anything um i mean he kind of was pushing for snow and daenerys to get together because they'd make a cute couple which is different than what his attitude was when he was watching him fuck <laughs> which was weird uh but because he had that look on his face like oh. um so i don't know we we don't know what's going on with Tyrion, but i like that they didn't spend a lot of time they didn't waste time with, oh, it's you from the other side of the river. Oh, it's yeah. you that I don't like. And actually, Brad, I think he he had that line, which was the writers kind of winking nod at the audience when he said, we don't have time for this. Right. Right at the start. He's like, we don't have time for this. Yeah. Like, there's like the, the, the walkers. Just we we got to deal the, with the fucking walkers. Yeah, man. they just broke through the wall. They got a dragon. Yeah. You know, because they had that first moment where it seemed like it was going to get heated because when, when Daenerys first walked in and Sansa and the whole, you know, Winterfell gang is there and you think they're going to have words and they're looking at in the kind of like uh, Western showdown type looks at each other. And then Bran's like, we don't got time for this, which yeah. is great. We don't have time for this. Yeah. We got seven episodes, and we can fill in the blanks yeah. as an audience. And we have a few lines of dialogue later with Daenerys, like, oh, your sister doesn't like me. It's like, okay, we get it. Move on. We got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> so that I think the writers did very, very, very well. Yeah. So that's pretty much what the bulk of the episode is. Just everybody kind of seeing each other meeting each other again for the first time but we did have one scene up uh beyond the wall our friend uh the what's his name the red-headed wildling say i forget everybody's name do you remember his name uh, i love him no i don't remember his name wildling man what yeah this guy oh, Termon. yeah, yeah. Termon. oh he's got a last name giant's bane Anyway, Termon is one of my favorite characters uh, in the show. He's so funny. He's pretty hardcore. Yeah, and he's really hardcore. <laughs> and so, you know, people had already predicted that he would be alive because they saw him uh, running down the steps in the wall when the wall was getting torn up last season. And so I'm glad we got to see him in the beginning. And see what they were up to. He's with the with the dude with the one eye. Which again, look at this. We suck, man. 
We're not very well prepared here. <laughs> What's the one-eyed guy? Uh, one-eyed guy. Game of Thrones. Google is your friend. Oh, there you go. Barrick. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Which I predict is going to die, man, because he's died a bunch of times, and he keeps talking about how he has this purpose of why he's around. So I think he's going to sacrifice himself. He's got those cool flaming swords. And this scene was hardcore, man. I mean, for for Game of Thrones usually does that. I mean, it'll have a real light episode, and then at the last minute, it'll just remind you that it's still Game of Thrones, and we yeah. will kill children. Yeah. And not only kill them, burn, <laughs> burn them as <laughs> burn, they scream. Burn them at the stake. Yeah, as they scream yeah. and wail in pain. So this was a hell of a, an image. I loved it, you know. So it shows that. The Night King is not playing, I, I, and he's quite an artist. <laughs> Very, uh, and so I guess this kid, you know, he had turned. He had the blue eyes, and they had to stab him with the fire and to kill him. And this was a message. But I don't know what message does the Night King need to send. He's already fucking scary. We know he's coming down, and he's got a dragon. What more message does he need to send? uh to <laughs> to anybody <laughs> but whatever i mean it, it, uh, sometimes you just kind of you know let things um slide on a narrative level just for the sake of having an awesome fucking scene which it was it made me jump for a second when the little kids scream and uh, I don't even know what were they talking about trying to ride the horses around the king to see and the, the, that's a question i had asked you how slow are these motherfuckers? Because, I mean, when they attack, uh, what was that great episode, that Hard Home or whatever? They're, they're fast zombies. These are like World War Z style yes, zombies. Yes, they're, they're fast. And yet, they're fucking slow as hell. Like, how long does it take the Night King to march this army to the south? The fact that the fact that we, we, we watched, like, what, 70 minutes mm -hmm. of television and there was no fucking White Walkers... Is, is actually quite telling about how slow they are. Yeah, which doesn't make any <laughs> fucking sense to me. I'm like, you broke you, the wall. You broke the fucking wall. It's like time to... Cause and, and, guys... and half the episode is set in Winterfell, too. They're, they're there, like, right on the front lines. Yeah. And White Walkers, eh, they didn't come. I know, so I never got this. And I, and, and I had an issue with that. Well, not just me. A bunch of people had an issue with that last year with that nutty episode i mean it's a great episode but it just makes no sense the episode where they went out all the way out there just to capture um uh, one of the walkers to bring back to cersei like right. magnificent right. seven style like the worst idea ever but, <laughs> it is a bad idea yeah but it's but one it of those, worked it worked it did work i mean it worked one because it's just the imagery is great. So it's one of those episodes where you forgive the, the fact that it's just like the dumbest possible <laughs> idea ever. But we forgive it because it's a fucking awesome episode. Iconic, right. you know, like yeah. great scenes, you know, with the dragon getting shot. at. Oh, and what's his name? Uh, the Helm throwing a rock. Like, yeah. why would you do that? Like, yeah. you know, there's so many stupid things in that episode. But at the same time, it's so fucking great. But anyway, a lot of people had an issue with that, with the dude that ran back. Remember, he like, uh, he ran all the way back to... Uh, yeah, yeah. He, like, like, why would you fucking do that? No, but how long does it take? Like, how fast is this? <laughs> like, that's one thing that in the last couple of seasons, and it's been a good criticism. I agree with this criticism of the shows. Because in early seasons, you felt the distance of the places. They would be like... Two, Vastly three, apart. four episodes still on the road. Yeah, still. you remember the first season where where <laughs> they they take the King's Road to King's Landing. Yeah, and that that was like an entire episode. Just, yes, just going to fucking King's Landing. Yes, in Winterfell. No, it took forever, and so it seems like now like things move very quickly when they need to, like with that dude. Uh, the it, he's I, I forgot his name too. The um, the guy that does the uh, the axes and stuff. Um, the hound. No, the kid with the axe. The um, he's another one that's. Um, <laughs> the kid with the axe. You're yes. googling the kid with the. Kid axe. with the axe. 
<laughs> Game of Thrones. I bet you it'll show his picture. Oh, no, it won't this time. It's not Podrick. Is it Podrick? No. Podrick is the um, yep. is the one that makes the pies, right? That's right. See, I don't remember his name. Podrick Payne. Yes. No. No, Podrick is the squire. Yeah, yeah the and squire. he's also Robert's bastard. Yes, but there's a, the other bastard, the um, <laughs> um, what's the? He's the one that got uh, that the uh, that that red that red witch, uh, from Game of Thrones. What's her name? Marcella? Uh, Melisandra. Me- Melisandra. Yeah. So Melisandra tries to kill. Let me see. I'm not going to remember her name, his name, which sucks. You're you're not thinking of Stannis' daughter, are you? No, 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 not Stannis' daughter, but the kid that, uh, he's the welder. That's, 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 uh, This guy, Gendry, Gendry. Gendry, Gendry, you you were right. Gendry, 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 guys. God damn it. Uh, he... Was yeah, he was faster than us trying to find out his name. <laughs> <laughs> going, going from like the out super out in the north wilderness with a bunch of walkers all the way back to Castle Black, and then a crow apparently could go warp speed <laughs> all the way down to where Daenerys was in that Targaryen island to then. The dragon come all the way up in enough time to do like the X dragon, you know, to, <laughs> to save everybody. And I was like, what? But anyway, that part kind of weirds me out because I don't know. Like, it seems like these White Walkers, maybe they're like the Hebrews in the, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get to the promised land. They just go around, you know, it took them 40 years because there's that funny meme about that where they have like a google maps and it shows like from sinai to like the to canaan on foot it's like two weeks <laughs> <laughs> you know if you take google maps <laughs> and yet the uh israelites were wandering around for about 40 years so i'm not sure what that's about i it, but it makes sense that it's going to be the third episode hopefully you know that they're going to Finally get to Winterfell. Although there is the slight possibility, but they haven't really brought this up, that the Night King and the White uh, the White Walkers are a little bit, well, not nervous, but they know that they have dragon glass and they know that they're somewhere prepared to do battle. And they know that, you know, it's not impossible for the living to beat the dead. So it could be that he's just planning a proper attack, but they should show that a little bit more. You know, they, he's got a fucking dragon. He should have <laughs> flown over Winterfell by now and just like, I mean, he doesn't even need the, 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 the day. He can just blow up Winterfell with these dragons. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think he's, he's dragging his sweet butt, actually. Uh, honestly, I, I think the army of the dead is, is actually pretty weak. Because they've been defeated so many times already that if they were any serious threat, it it would have been exposed already. We shall see. We shall see. So I'm looking forward to just getting done with that storyline. Although I would like to get a little bit more backstory with the uh, Army of the Dead and all that stuff. Just I, I, th- I think the backstory has been pretty fairly explained, actually. Yeah, I mean, the first maybe, maybe, man, not, right? maybe not in the TV series, but at least in the books. Like, oh. they, they explain that, like, okay, they sleep under the ice for a thousand years and blah, blah, blah. Once every thousand years, they rise up and eat the living and blah, blah, blah. Blah. But the thing is, if they were any good, they would have won, mm-hmm. which they haven't. So that leads me to believe that actually, you know, our heroes are going to kick their asses and then go back to fighting amongst themselves. Yes. And any death predictions for no death this episode, by the way? No, no deaths, no deaths. Uh, but any 
death well except for this little kid uh any death predictions for well what do you think is going to be up next episode because if i mean just going off the theory which i think is all right we, solid we, that, we've had a very soft opening episode yeah but look, before you go on just going off the theory that episode three is gonna be the battle at winterfell apparently right. that's what everybody's saying right so what do you predict for next episode or, and or who's going to die at this battle of Winterfell? Um, I think Daenerys is toast. And At uh, the battle? Yes, yes. Wow. And, and not only do I think she is going to be toast, but I think she's going to be toast because uh, Cersei sets her up. Mm. I think Cersei is going to put her in a position where, where she, she has no alternative. And what do you mean by that? Um, I think that um, Cersei is is trying to control the situation by by not being involved, and she's going to try and eliminate her rivals by distance. Uh huh. And um, if she can put Daenerys in a situation where where her death is certain, she will certainly do it. No doubt. And give, give me a second. Don't talk for just a second. All right, you can talk. All right. So I I believe that um, Cersei's ultimate motivation is to get rid of everybody while they are fighting the White Walkers. And to me, it seems... Like, as a writer, you, you cannot have John and Daenerys living to the end. It It's not possible. I mean, we would love that. Like, the audience would love to see John and Daenerys together at the end, even though that's kind of inbreeding. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. Yeah, it's not happening. So one of them has to go. And in my mind, I see John has this destiny, mm -hmm. sort of. Maybe it's not to sit on the Iron Throne. I don't think he's he's going to get that. Yeah. But at least he has a purpose. Mm -hmm. Daenerys, I think, maybe in the long run, she doesn't have much of a purpose. Yes. So I could totally see <clears throat> Cersei setting Daenerys up for a tragic death during the battle with the White Walkers. Wow. But she, uh, Cersei's... Sitting it out. Do you think she's going to send somebody up there to... No, I think she's just waiting for the best. I think she's really hoping everybody just dies and everyone will leave her alone, which is which is delusional thinking. Yeah. And But the thing is, I think if I had to predict an end to the series, that would be it. Like but Before we go to... And I don't want to give too many end predictions yet, but I, I'm curious about this battle, Winterfell. Did you notice a little bit of what we could call foreshadowing, perhaps? Um, when Sam was in the crypt with John, he mm -hmm. did mention to him, you know, that you were willing to give up the crown to save your people. Would she be willing to do that? And that's right. a character flaw of Daenerys, is that. Is she willing to put her life on the line in order to save something other than the crown? So perhaps that was a bit of foreshadowing of what Daenerys might do. Daenerys might finally make a real sacrifice because she hasn't really made a real sacrifice this whole series. I mean, everything's no, kind of she's been, never given anything up. Yeah, she, everything's she, been handed to her. Yes. I mean, she lost her dragon, but as we saw this episode, she didn't seem that. <laughs> she wasn't all that yeah. broken up about she it. She wasn't that all that broken up about it. Because she does, like you said, she she believes in this destiny, which may be a false destiny. It may be just a destiny that she's creating for herself. So And, and that is a recurring theme in this show. Like if you look at um Melisandre and Stannis' relationship. Yes. She she constantly builds him up to be like, It's your destiny. I I've seen it in the fire and and then and she's like, always wrong. <laughs> and, and then it went bad. She's like, oops. Yes. No, she's the worst uh, fucking, uh, um, uh, uh, what, what, what's that word? Prophet. 
prophet pro prognosticator, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> she's the worst of that. Uh, yeah, she's like, okay, all. okay. Yeah. There was a king who was supposed to win, but it wasn't Stannis, and I'm sorry, I fucked up. I'm yeah, sorry. she's always got a good excuse though for why she, it's like you didn't believe. It's like there's a, <laughs> um, I remember back in the day they had the the Cleo, the the psychic, the tele, television psychic, and it's like you, if you don't believe, that's why it didn't come true. So she's always got an out with her, and I do believe she's got real power. Yeah, she does. But she brought Jon Snow back to life. No, yeah, she's yeah. obviously got real power. Yeah, she's got real power. So. I don't know what her end game is. We didn't see any of her this uh, episode. No, but we she's didn't. definitely, I think she's going to play a part towards the end. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking that the Battle of Winterfell, it wouldn't be a bad spot to, for Daenerys to die. Perhaps, and this would be kind of wild, uh, riding one of her dragons to kill the ice dragon. And then she maybe loses another dragon and right. loses her own life. I think that would be a really awesome way for her to end her her story. But something's got to – but there's got to be a buildup. There's got to be some type of character buildup to get her to the point where she realizes that being – because that was part of last season too when uh, uh, Tyrion was speaking to her about the whole idea of like – you can't be a king, a queen if you can't win the kingdom first. Right. You know, like you remember when she was just gonna go to um, the Red Keep or whatever the King's Landing and just kill her. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, man, yes, you can do that, but you won't have a kingdom to you rule. You won't have a kingdom to rule, and people are not gonna respect you. respect you. You know, so yeah. you have to win the heart of the people in order. And that's something that she doesn't know how to do. I mean, uh, she's made a lot of fuck ups even before then, due to the idea of like she just she's got a little bit of that Mad King DNA in her <laughs> at times that shows up. So yeah, I could see her dying in season three. So which makes me think that's in season three, episode three. Which makes you think episode two is gonna be more uh, character building. I think she, I think John is gonna tell her the truth, right? And I think that's gonna fuck her up. It's not gonna stop him from fucking his aunt, though. I don't know. I think they might not do because John Snow is like Mister Boy Scout, so right. I think he might not do it because of that. And that might be what comes up. She might be coming on to him, and he's just gonna be like, "Wait a second." <laughs> uh, but I think that's going to screw her mind up in a way that she, it hasn't been screwed in a while. And that might lead her to what am I going to do? Am I, is this a fight that I want to fight even if I'm not going to legally be the queen right. in of all the Seven Kingdoms? So that, I think that's going to be an interesting interplay. And I think that might play out next episode, which then is going to set up a possible Daenerys death in the final episode. Now, let's finish up because we're coming right. in to an hour. But I had forgotten to put one little slide here, which is why we had right. a little bit of a technical difficulty. Because this was really Jamie. important. Yes. Jamie. Jamie is, is the first to die. I am sure of that. Yes, and look at that final he, scene he of the episode. He looks like he's dead already. Yeah, he looks really beat up. It looks like he ran out of uh, that <laughs> he, hair He's lost all his fire. Yeah, he's, he's lost, lost his all fire. his fire. Um, but uh, he's someone that I just want to live long enough to put a knife through Cersei's heart. Man. Yeah. <laughs> She so, will do it first. She will do it first. Yeah, I mean, you know, people got a lot of theories of what's going on with Jamie, but I, I'm just going to root for, because he, to me, is like the one, it's the, the one redemption arc in the whole show. I mean, that's yeah, it. Yeah, he is. I, you know, dude, I, I, I watched the entire first season over the past first week, and Jamie Lannister is such an evil oh, bastard in that prick. show. Yeah. But he becomes actually adorable. Yes. Even when he is raping his sister over yes. the son's corpse. Yeah. He is actually kind of likable. 
No, he's. I mean, he's somebody that we as an audience root for now. Yeah. And that's incredible. I mean, that's a credit to the writing, a credit to his acting ability, the actor there. Uh, but so I'm rooting for Jamie to survive the battle, and he won't. He uh, won't. He's, he's, he's like. Well, why do you think he's gonna die so much? Because because Cersei is gonna be fucking bitter, and she's just gonna sell him out. I know, but. During the battle, I mean, that's going to be such a difficult... And he's, and he's already a fucking handicapped, too, right? He's, he's yeah, he is handicapped. So we'll see, we'll see. I mean, he, he he's one of those that I feel needs to have a meaningful death. And I don't know if just dying in the battlefield against a White Walker... Oh, I, I think it will be meaningful. Death. I think it will be meaningful. But I, I like, seriously, like, if, you had, if I had to bet money... <laughs> Uh-huh. On, on major characters who are going to go out badly, Jamie is. No, I, I I agree he's going to go out, but not at the Battle of Winterfell. I think he's going to survive the Battle of no, Winterfell. No, yeah, yeah, yes, I, I agree. Daenerys goes out of the Battle oh, of Winterfell. Okay, Winterfell, okay, then we and, agree on and, that. Yeah, I was... and Jamie is going to get stabbed in the back by his fucking oh, sister. Oh no, that I agree with. See, we were confusing things because I'm just going as far as Episode Three for now. I'm not All doing right. end game theories. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't think he's going to survive to the end of the series. No, no way. But here at Winterfell, I think he's going to definitely... Yeah, he will survive Winterfell. And... But but he meets his end at, at Cersei's end. Oh, yes. And, and dies in Brienne's arms. Yeah, and the, possibly. The woman he loves. You know, yeah. he foretold his own yeah. death. Yeah. But the episode ends with him giving Bran the stare down. Although Bran gave him his look... Not- Dude, that that <coughs> that episode where uh, the one we just watched, yes. the, the the first one where yes. he locks eyes with Bran, yes, and they 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 remember what happened between yes. them in the first episode. That was fucking gold. Yes, <coughs> but Bran is not really Bran anymore. Yeah, so he, it made like, me wonder what he was. Three eyed thinking. fucking raven or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> but it made me wonder what the fuck he was thinking when he looked like it. It wasn't like a look of disgust or because he's beyond that. He's yeah. Like, he's past yeah, all that shit. So I, I just makes me wonder if Brand doesn't see something for Jamie that he's gonna end up telling Jamie something bigger, right. a bigger mission for him, something that Jamie is not maybe not ready for, but. Oh, it was a great way to end the episode. I mean, yeah, you know. yeah, that was that was like ah, oh, yeah. I, I I seriously shit myself. Yes, which <laughs> makes me think that there's gonna be a little bit more. Like we were talking about how this episode had a lot of reunions, but they were quick, efficient, and to the point. Yeah. This reunion, who knows? It might have a little bit more behind it. We shall see. But overall, what uh, grade would you give? to this episode if i can move to our last little screen here oh yes all right, all right. i would give it an 8.5 8.5 out of 10 that's a that's not a bad score i think i'd go eight yeah, yeah. hard eight a hard eight it, it it uh for me it worked on then, a lot there, of there was nothing happening really there yes. was there there was not a lot of forward plot development well other but, than but the individual scenes yes. were fucking hardcore yes uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, the only thing for me that was hardcore plot development was that John find out, found out who yeah. he was. <laughs> oh, boy, was who he was. Really was. Yes, because that's really <laughs> important to the relationship he's going to have with Daenerys right. moving forward. But outside of that, you're right. I mean, there wasn't a lot of plot moving forward, but it put all the pieces in place so exactly. perfectly. That we know what everybody's up to. We know Cersei's just chilling back. Yeah. We know um, the Greyjoys are also just chilling back. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you get me the fuck out of this shit. We know they're building up. Euron, that's his name. Euron. Euron, yeah. But um, or, what's her name? Uh, the, the, uh, Yara. Yara, you know. And we know Yara's just chilling back at, at the castle. In that Winterfell, we know everybody's just preparing for war. And we know the Night King's coming down at whatever yeah, rate he's gonna he fuck is. Shit up. You know, so that's all we kind of needed to know. 
and we got all of that out of the way. And now we can just get on to the carnage. Yes, which makes, yeah, I mean, we got one more episode to the carnage, so it makes me wonder all the other bombshells that may be exploding <laughs> in episode two of Game of Thrones season eight. Right. So, yes, I give it a, an eight. So, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me there at my blog, brazuza.wordpress.com, where I do a whole bunch of other stuff. I review a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you check out my channel, you'll see that I've been watching um, The Walking Dead, which had a really great season, and Star Trek Discovery, which is having a better second season than first season, although it goes Mexican telenovela a little <laughs> bit too much for me every once in a while. And... But on my blog, uh, I'll have a, a, a story up soon of some things I've been watching, which uh, were the OA, Glass, and Shazam. So look out for that. It'll be out soon. And thanks, uh, Peter, for joining me. Glad to be here. Yes, it was fun. And he did cry. I can, I can attest to that. I am and, still crying. <laughs> but okay, guys. Until next time, see you. Goodbye. All right, bud. Say goodbye, man. Goodbye.